The James Webb Space Telescope has recently taken the news, and for good reason. The first images from the world's largest and most powerful space telescope shows its power. But with this news brings a question to religious believers. If Christianity is true, why would God make such a massive universe for a tiny speck in the universe? American astronomer Carl Sagan is known for asking this same question. Let's start with two reasons. The first concerns the production of life essential elements. The density of protons and neutrons in the universe relates to the cosmic mass or mass density. That density determines how much hydrogen, the slightest of the elements, fuses into heavier elements during the first few minutes of cosmic existence. And the amount of heavier elements determines how much additional heavy element production occurs later in the nuclear furnaces of stars. If the density of protons and neutrons were significantly lower, the nuclear fusion would proceed less efficiently. As a result, the cosmos would never be capable of generating elements heavier than helium. Elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sodium, and potassium, which are essential for any kind of physical life. On the other hand, if the density of protons and neutrons were slightly higher, nuclear fusion would be too productive. All the hydrogen in the universe would rapidly fuse into elements as heavy as or heavier than iron. Again, life essential elements, including hydrogen, would not exist. The second reason the universe must be hugely massive concerns its expansion rate. The rate at which the universe expands throughout a cosmic history critically depends on its mass density. According to the law of gravity, the closer any two massive bodies are to one another, the more powerfully those bodies attract each other. Therefore, the closer various bits and pieces of mass are to one another in the universe, the more effectively they will slow down the universe's expansion. Conversely, the farther apart those bits and pieces are, the less breaking effect gravity has on cosmic expansion. Without any additional cosmic density factors such as dark energy, a universe with less mass mass density would not form stars like the Sun and planets like Earth. Its expansion would be too rapid that gravity would ha have an opportunity to pull together the gas and dust to make such bodies. Yet, if the cosmic mass density were any greater, gas and dust would condense so effectively under gravity's influence that all stars would be much larger than the Sun. Any planets such stars might hold in their orbit would be unsuitable for life because of the intensity of the star's radiation and because of rapid changes in the star's temperature, radiation, and luminosity. Not to mention the radiation and gravitational disturbances caused by neighboring supergiant stars. With only a little extra mass, the universe could expand so slowly that all stars in the cosmos would rapidly become black holes and neutron stars. The density near the surface of such bodies would exceed exceed 5 billion tons per teaspoon. At such enormous densities, molecules are impossible, and so are atoms. Therefore, life would be impossible. The radiation and gravitational disturbances from such black holes and neutron stars would also make physical life impossible anywhere in such a dense universe. Physical life cannot exist in a universe with a mass density any less or any more than the actual cosmic value. Ironically then, the vastness of the universe falls under our fine-tuning data that allows for embodied moral agents. There are yet many other explanations for the vastness of the universe that range from aesthetic values since the universe is beautiful, to alethic values since allowing us to discover the vastness and the mysteries of the universe serves towards a more valuable state of affairs. In conclusion, the vastness of the universe is perfectly explained by God's existence.